People with ADHD have poor attention and they have high levels of impulsivity. They are easily distractible. But the way that shows up is very surprising. You might think that people with ADHD just simply can't attend to anything. They really can't focus, even if they really want to. But that's simply not the case. People with ADHD, yes, they are distractible. Yes, they are impulsive. Yes, they are easily annoyed by things happening in the room. They sometimes have a high level of emotionality as well. Not always, but often. However, people with ADHD can have a hyper-focus, an incredible ability to focus on things that they really enjoy or are intrigued by. Now, this is a very important point because typically we think of somebody with ADHD as being really wild and hyperactive or having no ability whatsoever to sit still and attend. And while that phenotype, as we call it, that contour of behavior and cognition can exist, many people, if not all people with ADHD, if you give them something they really love, like if the child loves video games or if a child loves to draw or if an adult loves a particular type of movie or a person very much, they will obtain laser focus without any effort. So that tells us that people with ADHD have the capacity to attend, but they can't engage that attention for things that they don't really, really want to do. And as we all know, Much of life, whether or not you're a child or an adult, involves doing a lot of things that we don't want to do. Much of our schooling involves doing things that we would prefer not to do and sort of forcing ourselves to do it, to attend, even though we are not super interested in what we are attending to. There are a couple other things that people with ADHD display quite often. One is challenges with time perception. Time perception is a fascinating aspect of how our brain works. And later we're going to talk about time perception and how you can actually get better at time perception. It's very likely that right now you are doing things that get in the way of optimal time perception. And I will tell you how to adjust your ability to measure time with your brain. People with ADHD often run late. They often procrastinate. But what's interesting and surprising is that if they are given a deadline, they actually can perceive time very well. And they often can focus very well if the consequences of not completing a task or not attending are severe enough. It's a little bit like the way that people with ADHD can really focus if they like something. Well, if they're scared enough about the consequences of not attending, oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes they can attend. If they're not really concerned about a deadline or a consequence, well, then they tend to lose track of time and they tend to underestimate how long things will take. Now, many people do that, not just people with ADHD, but people with ADHD have challenges understanding how to line up the activities of their day in order to meet particular deadlines, even if it's just a simple thing like finishing one set of tasks before lunch. Oftentimes, they will remember that lunch starts at noon, but somehow they aren't able to fill the intervening time in a way that's productive, and they can obsess about the upcoming deadline, for instance. We will talk about how to remedy this. In addition, their spatial organization skills are often subpar. Not always, but often you will find that somebody with ADHD uses what's called the pile system in order to organize things. They will take many belongings, and this could be in the kitchen or in their bedroom or in their office or in any space, and they will start piling things up according to a categorization system that makes sense to them and only them. It doesn't really have any logical framework. Now, many people use the pile system. And if you use the pile system, that doesn't mean that you have ADHD. In fact, if you're unpacking a house or you've moved recently or you've received a lot of presents recently, the pile system makes perfect sense to organize your space. But people with ADHD tend to organize things according to the pile system all the time. And that pile system doesn't work for them. Okay, so that's the key distinction that they use a filing system. And it's not really files, they're piling things up in a way that makes sense to them, but then it doesn't work for them in terms of what tasks they actually need to perform. They can't find things. Or if anyone moves one thing, then it's very disruptive to their overall plan, because their overall plan doesn't really work in the first place. So that's a common phenotype, as we call it. A phenotype, by the way, is just an expression of a particular set of underlying genetic or psychological components, okay? So we say the phenotype. So a phenotype could be brown hair and uh, green eyes, like for me. A phenotype could also be that somebody uses the piling system, okay? The other thing that people with ADHD have real trouble with 
is so-called working memory. Now, you might think that people with ADHD would have really poor memories, but in fact, that's not the case. People with ADHD often can have a terrific memory for past events. They can remember upcoming events quite well. Their memory is clearly working. However, one aspect of memory in particular that we call working memory is often disrupted. Working memory is the ability to keep specific information online, to recycle it in your brain over and over again so that you can use it in the immediate or short term. A good example of this would be you meet somebody, they tell you their name, they give you their phone number verbally, and you have to walk back to your phone and enter it into your phone. People without ADHD might have to put some effort into it. It might feel like a bit of a struggle, but typically they would be able to recite that phone number in their mind over and over and then put it into their phone. People with ADHD tend to lose the ability or lack the ability to remember things that they just need to keep online for anywhere from 10 seconds to a minute or two. Okay, so a string of numbers like 643781 for most people would be pretty easy. 643781, 643781. You could probably remember that a minute from now without writing it down. But if you add one more number to that 6437813, it gets tougher. Okay, so there's a reason why phone numbers typically have seven digits in them. Of course, there's an area code, but remembering information that strings out longer than seven numbers or a sentence or two, that's challenging for most people. People with ADHD have severe challenges, even with much smaller batches of information over even much smaller batches of time. Deficits in working memory are also something that we see in people who have frontotemporal d dementia, so damage to the frontal lobes, or age-related cognitive decline. And so it will come as no surprise that later when we discuss treatments, supplements, and other tools for ADHD, that many of those treatments, supplements, and tools for ADHD are similar to the ones that work for age-related cognitive decline. Okay, so we've more or less established the kind of menu of items that people with ADHD tend to have. Some have all of them, some have just a subset of them. Their severity can range from very intense to mild, but in general, it's challenges with attention and focus, challenges with impulse control, they get annoyed easily, they have kind of an impulsivity, they can't stay on task, time perception can be off, they use the piling system or a system that doesn't work well for them in order to organize their things in physical space. And they have a hard time with anything that's mundane that they're not really interested in. But again, I just want to highlight that people with ADHD are able to obtain heightened levels of focus, even hyper-focus for things that are exciting to them and that they really want to engage in.